In this video, we're going to be going over how to create a Node CLI. I'll leave a link in the description with the background for why you would want to do a CLI like this. We're gonna be using ESPN.com as a source for our data. And again, yeah, that seems kind of excessive to make a ESPN CLI, but for the background, go ahead and check out the link in the description. So first we're gonna set up the index.js file where we're gonna do all of our work and we'll set up a main function where we can eventually run some async code and the rest of our CLI. Now that we have our skeleton laid out, let's start to add some functionality. First we can import a library for getting ESPN headlines and then we'll make the initial call to get them. Since this is an asynchronous call to get data, the user will have to wait until the call finishes before seeing any info. It'd be helpful to indicate to the user that the CLI is loading. So to do that, we'll use a library called Aura and that'll allow us to show an animated loading indicator while it's uh, loading. Before we make our async call, we'll start the spinner, and then once the call is done, we can stop the spinner. Using the home page data we just got, we'll grab all the headlines that we need so we can display them to users later on. Again, we'll use our helper functions in here. Now we've gathered and stored all the info we'll want to display to users, sports, and a large list of headlines to choose from. So let's look at declaring our CLI options. We're gonna give users a couple different option types to choose from, an article to read, a sport to see headlines for that specific sport, or a more type so they can see more headlines for a specific sport. This might be a good candidate for using TypeScript because different selections will behave differently based on what type they are, like headline, sport, or exit. But we're just using vanilla JavaScript in this tutorial, so we'll do some minor type handling ourselves. So. Let's declare some variables so we can handle user input differently based on the type of selection they've made. We'll also make some generic options for the user to choose regardless of what headlines are available on any given day. Because this is a CLI, we'll be prompting the user over and over for information until they choose to exit. So that's a good fit for a while loop and we can specify which selection the user made in the loop. We'll store the selection and also the selection title. Each time the user makes a choice, we'll store the selection, go back through our loop, then handle the selection that was previously made. So with that behind us, let's make our first prompt. We'll be using inquire to show prompts to the user. Let's import inquire at the top of our file. And now we can put it to use in our while loop by creating our first prompt. It'll ask the user which story from the homepage they'd like to read, then give them a few options. They can choose to read one of the homepage headlines in the list. They can list out different sports for which to see further headlines, or they can exit the app. Here we've used inquire to show a prompt to the user. For the choices value, we provide an array of strings for the user to choose from. Below this if block is where we actually run the prompt and then store the user's choice as the selection title. We'll need more info than just the title, so let's declare a couple of variables to find the selection based on the selection title. These variables are basically combining all our different option types into one big array of selections. And then from that all options array, we can find which one has a matching title to our user selection. So let's handle another selection type now, exiting. So we'll add our exit block toward the end of our while loop. We're showing homepage headlines already, so now we can also show headlines for other sports. Let's add another block to handle that. And once the user chooses a specific sport, we want them to be able to see headlines for that sport. So we'll do something similar to when we showed homepage headlines, but this time we only need them for the chosen sport. And lastly, we can actually show article text if a user chooses a headline to read. First, we'll import a library called boxin at the top of the file. This will allow us to draw a box around the article text that we show. So insert one more if else before our final else block. And in here, we'll actually log out some text using styling from boxin before showing another prompt. Now the CLI allows users to see front page headlines, a list of sports, headlines for specific sports, and read articles for headlines. It's looking pretty good, but we do have two finishing touches to add before we're done. If you run through the CLI a few times, you'll notice that the prompts kind of pile up on top of each other. They stay in the console, but don't offer much value there. Since we're storing the prompt each time, we can actually use inquire to clear it out. At the beginning of our while loop, we can call dot clear on current prompt. We'll use optional chaining so it doesn't error out on the first execution. And the last thing we'll add to our CLI is a log at the very start telling users how many times they've used the CLI in a day. So in order to do this, we'll store a count of daily executions using a local storage node module, and we'll import it here. This will behave just like browser local storage, so we can use a similar API. We could also use a database here if we needed to, but 
This should do the trick just fine, so we won't get into that. And depending on how many times we've run the CLI, we want to show our log in a different color. So we'll import our very last library, chalk, to change our text color. Now we can make a new function where we'll handle all the daily usage logic using chalk to change the color of the log and uh, local storage to count the daily usage. Then we'll call it at the beginning of our main function. So we're all set. Our CLI will show us ESPN homepage headlines, list available sports, and let us read articles. In doing that, we've colored console output, displayed an animated spinner during loading, provided prompts for the user, and drawn boxes around some console text. We're now familiar with a few different Node CLI utilities, but there are a bunch more that you can explore and play around with. Go ahead and again, check out the background video that I have linked in the description, and hopefully this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.